<laughs> what up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. We just kept the light on, you know, we about to go in. We got some shit to talk about regarding the stars and what's going on in the sky right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, you know what I'm saying? So we dealing with a whole lot of air right now. We're dealing with a, we gonna jump right in, right? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dave B. You're watching Dave Beyond TV, but we go beyond the everyday bullshit that people be consuming on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, yeah, so here, here's the deal, right? We got the sun in Libra. Matter of fact, I'm gonna pull it up. I already know where it's at, but I like to make sure I'm not talking off my ass. Got the sun in Libra, right? Moon in Aquarius, right? Now, we coming off of the moon in Capricorn, right? So let's talk a little bit about when the moon was in Capricorn, because this is just, this is kind of... um. An important segment right an important time right now because we're dealing with so much saturn influence you know the sun right now is in libra where libra um saturn is exalted in libra so um you might be wondering like you know how does that how does that correlate because you know venus is um i mean well libra is the sign where you know venus is home at you might think that Libra is all about being pleasant. You know, no, Libra actually is about that hard work sometimes. You know, um, it's not all about pleasure. It's actually, that's what creates the elegant, sophisticated energy that Libra holds. It's, it's a mix between, um, you know, good taste, high value, but also taking that high value and, and giving it structure. It's the, it's the uh, you could think of it as the young woman who was raised with a strong, um, raised with a strong i'm gonna say like raised with a, a, a strong mind you know what i'm saying no matter who was in their life you know they was just raised with a strong mind so the way they carry themselves is they actually know their value so even though they hold the grace in the um you know the grace in the um the um sensuality of of a of a you know a, a, a feminine figure they still have a strong enough demeanor that can support that and it creates a balance it, it creates a situation where it comes off elegant it comes off like you know it takes that grace but makes it something that is amplified and you know uh easily admired and not only admired it's like if you mix the the venus with good status you know so you mi you mix the um the beauty and the grace with good status and and not only good status but strong um, I want to say morals, even though morals a lot of times are correlated more so to Jupiter. Um, it's morals in the sense of, um, you know, something sturdy to stand on. You know what I'm saying? It's like it, it gives good morals simply because it's, it's when we talk about, you know, what actually makes a person um, trustworthy in the public eye, the 10th house, right? It's those Capricorn-like characteristics. It's the Saturn aspect, you know, is that like you respect people that you actually see putting in the work. You respect people who have a foundation to themselves in which you know that, you know, you might not always agree with what they say, but you know that what they say and is, is something that they stand on. And, and just that alone, that energy alone, when you say stuff and you stand on it, it gives off an impression that, okay, you you somebody that we can trust in the public eye. And it's not until, you know, it, when people have certain underlying feelings of, 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 of not knowing exactly what they're talking about or not being confident in what they talk about, we see right through that. You know, naturally, you'll start to grow distrustful of this person. And you might, you know, they might not even be doing nothing. They might be doing everything in the world to prove that they're trustworthy. But it's just the way... It's because of them and how they're dealing with their own internal energy that when we get hit with it on the outside, right? And this is just good advice for, for people in general. Like when, you, when you're when you doing anything, participating in anything, you need to develop a mind state that can jump fully into, into it and believe in yourself and trust yourself right or wrong and be open to learning how to do something right. But initially you want to have that same confidence and not confidence in the sense of being arrogant, you know, coming into a situation like knowing damn well you don't know that much but trying to overprove that you know that's another part of the spectrum in which you're going on the opposite direction and still fucking up right you got to have a, a, a center focus where you know you don't know everything but you're confident in what you do know and even if it's a brand new experience you trust yourself enough to again get in there and as new things new information comes about remain in flexible uh light and open to taking that information in and learning how to transmute quick enough in order to make sure that you you know what i'm saying you catch your step while you while you run it so um but anyway let's get back into the energies right so 
Yeah, so coming off that Capricorn energy, right? The whole theme of this little period of time, right? Probably until we get to the moon in Pisces, um, right now is, is making a decision, cultivating a, a, a decision, um, a decision that is appropriate to your circumstance, right? Because all year, right, from Aries season to now, right, we're 180 degrees. We, we on the other side of where we started from. So you have a whole wealth of knowledge and information as far as what's been working, what's not been working, who you really are, what you value, um, those around you and your surroundings and, and what you can actually do in those surroundings, right? And now, see, when we look at where Mars is at, for instance, Mars is in Gemini. So right now, when it comes to our surroundings, and even though you might not have Mars in the third house, it's still the idea that, you know, Mars in Gemini in general is being passionate about those familiar things to you. So this might be in a different area of your life, but there's still an air of familiarity. No matter where you got Gemini at, that's going to be energy that and when you participated with a little bit in that house, you're going to cling on to what's familiar and you're going to want to talk about it and, and, and share share ideas. Like, for instance, I got uh, Gemini kind of like in that it's in the seventh house in my eighth house. Right. But it just when it comes to seventh house like things, relationships. I'm still going to do what's familiar to me in that area, you know, because of the Gemini influence and I'm going to want to talk in that area. Eighth house, same thing. I'm going to want to get familiar with certain things behind closed doors and still want to communicate about them. Now, depending on, again, we know that, for instance, just alignment wise, Gemini in the eighth house is a natural inconjunct when you talk about the Gemini and the Scorpio energy. So knowing that I got a, a inconjunct energy or sign in a house that you know or a sign in the house that that creates an in conjunction with the with the with the signs themselves i know that you know and this is this is for you and your child that's the only reason why i talk about my shit is so y'all can frame it with y'all shit when you know you know when you're dealing with a certain sign in a house and see houses really make up the 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 the, the, the framework of how your psyche moves you know in certain things that you find yourself in that you know you need to figure out, you know, that's why the ascending is pretty important because it gives you a framework as to where, how all these energies fall within your life. So you know that when you're dealing with uh, eighth house like things, you might talk like, for instance, I know I might talk too much or I might, um, I might, I, I can only talk about, I should only talk about things that I'm familiar with the most, you know, and then also I need to be open and able to not only share my information, but listen to information in other way, when, whenever uh, eighth house topics are talked about. So, you know, wherever you got Gemini at, you know, that's where Mars is at right now. So Mars in general, your passions is going to be dealing with stuff that you already familiar with and working on how to communicate that and convey that and share that message. Right. And then we know that there's an air trine right now. So you got Mars and Gemini, especially right now, because you got Mars and Gemini passions. You got Saturn and the moon in Aquarius. So, again, cultivating the decision and uh, the sun being in um Libra. So right now with the moon, we're in the world of associates. We're in the world of looking at our associations. We just came from the world, though, of Capricorn, which was structure, blueprint, figuring out how to apply our practicality to certain things, right? So that's what we was kind of dealing with. We were sitting back and figuring that out, right? And then we had a square, though. We had to learn a lot. We had to learn how we can, how we can utilize our resources right within our relationships but not go too far as to where we're not actually being relatable or we're not participating in a harmonious or a way that actually feels balanced and fair making sure that we're not too on the cutthroat business side but also making sure that there's not just nobody around us who don't got anything to offer you know we want to make sure that if you around us you got something to offer so it's like kind of us checking our our also checking our own internal plan and, and and like that's why i say cultivating the decision because that's the thing with this libra energy we're we're still dealing with that opposition from jupiter now with jupiter in the opposition it's like very much a at odds feeling or a, a space in which we need to bring balance when it comes to our individual experience and and who we actually need to be around because teamwork is always going to make the dream work. But right now, it's important for us to learn what it's like and have experiences that, that cater to our own individuality. So that is going to automatically create a, a dissonance, you know. But see, the full moon is moving towards where Jupiter is at. So 
only way we can really feel truly in our own bag, right? And we already been kind of experiencing this. Like even right now, with, um, or let's, let's talk about the other day, the day before when the moon was in Capricorn, it was squaring Jupiter. So we was learning the reality of our experiences on an individual level. And then also learning, right? Because it was like a square right there in the middle. So we was learning on one end our individuality and how that makes sense. But we was also learning how to apply ourselves to our, our relationships. Now, sometimes, you know, with, with earth signs, for instance, it's an internal sign. So a lot of times earth signs look at the world as what can things be done for me first before I participate. Just like with Venus and um, being on the night side of... Um, because, you know, Earth represents the night side of things, the, the night side of the yang energy, the light, night side of logic, which is practicality, going internal, building that up first before you're externalizing external. The external version of that would be the air. So with Earth signs in general, it's whatever planet it is, it's about doing that with themselves first. And then feeling comfortable to do it outside or receiving on some end. So when it comes to um, Virgo, you know, it's receiving information first, overthinking about it, right? <laughs> Analyzing it, going down to the details and then communicating it. When it comes to uh, Taurus, it's about uh, receiving uh, comfort, pleasure, support until it feels comfortable giving it, right? If it feels comfortable giving it. Same thing with Virgo in a sense. You know, Virgo will uh, uh, communicate more because it's still ruled by Mercury. But uh, nine times out of ten, the communication that they have within themselves is way, way more in-depth and way more full and way more, you know, um, way more extensive than what they actually do end up communicating. They might still talk a lot, but what they said to themselves is, you know, you, you don't even have a clue. As to how much information they gave themselves first before they even came to a conclusion to tell you about something. That's why a lot of times a Virgo can come off critical simply because they just spent so much time figuring out what it is that they didn't like, what it is that you was doing wrong, or what do you what you could do better. So much time figuring out how they was gonna communicate, or you know, and and, and that's the thing they they overthink about how they was gonna communicate it, but then then they just come out because it's Mercury still. So it's like when it do come out though. You think you got all oh, that was the worst, you know, they done cussed me out so hard, but you don't even realize like how like how real I ain't even gonna get too deep into it. But y'all y'all get what I'm saying, especially if you dealt with a Virgo before, you already know. You already know. And then Capricorn, um dealing with Saturn. So Capricorn needs to receive practical or receive um resources first before it not even resources as in money. It, it could be people. It, it look at people as resources. Like, what do you actually do? People, places, and things. How can I use these things? It has to see the value in, in which it wants to use things before it feels comfortable. And, and, and uh, before it feels comfortable applying itself and how it applies itself as, 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 as the boss. Think about you with a boss mentality, right? Nine times out of ten, if you got like a boss mind, a boss mind, when you walk into a room, you sit back and you watch everybody first and you see the reality of who you dealing with before you participate that way when you do participate you already in your mind got an idea of who you're going to use for what who you're going to put in what position now using ain't always bad you know we need capricorns in the world you know because capricorn energy that look we need we need everybody can't be a boss everybody can be a boss but a lot of times People think they can, and a Capricorn got to come around and be like, no, you're doing it wrong. You know what I'm saying? A Capricorn will make sure that everybody is in the right position. See, a lot of people want to be the boss from externalizing first. A Capricorn to teach you that, no, Earth, you got to, Earth and Cardinal, you got to sit back and figure out the playing field. You got to figure out what pieces you're using, what what's the board look like, and who's involved. And then you understand um, the reality of how to place individuals or people, places, and things. You know what I'm saying? It could be people, places, and things type shit. Because Capricorns will figure out how to use anything because, they, you know what I'm saying? That's just how their mind work, initiating new ways to think and be practical. But that takes, again, all Earth signs got to sit and receive something before they even, you know, care or know what to do with an external version. When you get a when you get an Earth sign that externalizes first, that makes them extremely... Um, 
uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? You probably won't catch a lot unless they got, you know, conflicting placements. Like you might be an earth, um, earth, sun, air, moon, or fire, moon. You know what I'm saying? And that makes you very, again, internally, it's fire. But see, you still say because how it looks like externally is like you taking your time and, and, and you know what I'm saying? But internally, you're going crazy. But vice versa, imagine if you had an earth, moon, where you truly want to be reserved and sit back, but you got like a fire sun or you got an air sun where you just can't help but communicate something. You know, hopefully you like, you know what I'm saying? It it, it gets it gets crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like for instance, like a um, I, I remember I was talking with somebody, I think it was a celebrity and it was like they're a Gemini sun, uh, Capricorn moon. And I was like, that's a tough placement because the Capricorn moon wants to be very sophisticated, structured, sit back and analyze first but the gemini just can't help but communicate first so the gemini makes the capricorn look very uh what unserious not as serious as, as a capricorn would like and so again that's not saying all people with that placement is going to be like that but it's saying that you have to knowing your own placements and your own alignments you have to come to the best conclusion on how to present that energy and not even think about it so hard just be yourself and like it's always easier said than done because we're raised in a way in which we 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 so heavily cling on our status. You know, what I'm saying this 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 especially this society in general, especially if you live in the U.S., is is hyper focused on the tenth house. So everything becomes tenth house focused. Like you know, what I'm saying down to even how you're parenting. A lot of parents can't even truly nurture and grow their kids. Um, efficiently simply because of whether they're struggling financially or they're the pressure they put on their child to be um, a good representation of their parenting like some parents care more about how their kid reflects them than who their kid actually is and supporting their child in whatever it is that they're here to do as a spirit you know what I'm saying so you know and that's that's like a generational thing you know because uh, I think the generation that raised most of the millennials and, and you know it was like uh what uh, saturn and libra was it saturn and libra or or i forget pluto and libra i don't i, I forget i, I don't want to again i don't like to talk out my ass so i just like to keep it you know from what i what i know you know what I'm saying? but i know that for a fact it's like a lot of parents the parenting style that came before us and i you know i'm not sure you know exact experience you know what i'm saying that i know who raised us some of some of those parents and i'm not even you know say some of those parents was just more so about how the child can reflect them and and give them good status and again that that's just based upon again society's drive and and, and trying to get everybody's mind focused on the 10th house that's why even commercials are the way they are you know people argue about capitalism and stuff like that and they they want to demonize it so you got to understand all these things is just energies you know these are just energies and, and how things are structured and set up um yeah it might not always feel good to you but understand it wasn't made for you it was made for whoever made it so you need to look at it like okay if i'm being governed under the system don't get angry at the system itself understand the dynamics of the system and then same thing with your data chart and everything you do on a day-to-day -day basis figure out how you can best apply yourself in order to get the most out of your situation and circumstance don't get lost in it where now you cling to the the pleasures of what it means to be in that energy you know be up be, be in the world but not of it you know say so don't 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 let these things become you where now you all you are is a, a, a hit song or, or, or a money grab. All you are is a gimmick, or all and simply because you understand these things work. Because once you and see, you wonder why certain celebrities move the way they do. They understand what works. You know, it's just again what we see happen to them a lot of times is that before you know subconscious community was coming in hard. Before we, we you know. When we think about the early development of a lot of these, um, because it's interesting, like when you think of technology, right, as far as mass media, now TV been around, radio been around, right, but, it, you know, and celebrities been a thing, but when you talk about, like, even like when we talk about hip hop, for instance, like hip hop is interesting because it was, it was, a phenomena that kind of changed the landscape of what a celebrity actually was. I think through hip hop, uh, 
individuals started to understand influence better because it was like who these nobodies are coming out of nowhere and it's like something about their creative energy is getting a whole lot of attention and it's it's so much attention that you know when you look at it from a business aspect you start to realize like all this influence and attention is grabbing too much of the masses and if there's things in that music or in that that's giving messages of again a lot of early hip hop was built off of the reality of you know what was going on in they in their area. So it was like whether whether it was poverty, whether it was um, you know uh, injustice, right? You know what I'm saying? We don't get too deep into race, but they was talking about things that pro that posed questions and made people think and realize, oh shit, stuff is fucked up. So it was like. Hip hop is important because it was it, the purpose of it. What it was built on was movement and change, and trying to again expression, but that expression led to influence. And once even the artists themselves realized they had influence, then it became a thing like, "Yo, my living condition is fucked up. Let me talk and spread that message." So hip hop, like to me, like when I look at it, it's like it had early energies of of true mass. It's like the early seeds of what mass media has become, where. You start to see that even today, like things are caricatures of what they are. See, when we talk about the early stages, because when hip hop was introduced, it was the early stages of true mass media. You know what I'm saying? Because what it did was it showed people who look just like people who from the streets, people from the absolute worst possible conditions can still gain influence. And so it inspired so many different people that, again, you had the, the I feel like that's almost like the beginning, the birth of influencer culture. Because before that, all celebrities all, all were manufactured, and that and that's that and that's the same thing that they keep on doing. That's why hip hop started to become when you get into the early '90s and then uh, what the N.W.A. all that shit. You get manufactured gangster rap type shit, where again they started to give things labels, and before it was just music itself, people coming together creating this new movement. Then it became oh. They already gained an influence. They, they was early on this shit, understanding influencer culture and understanding how to take a, a person's, again, individuality and influence and modify it by giving them the resources, right? But keeping them on a leash. It's almost like, yeah, you want the resources. Now, like, now I'm going to take you out of your location and I'm going to make you need these resources, right? And fall in love with them. And of course, these individuals didn't know any better. They were just, again, happy to be there. And then it's, it became a thing where, again, they became relying on the resources and then they created a situation where they, they're like, hey, if you don't do what we need, we're going to strip it away. And once you agree to that, what they had you doing for that money was, again, being a caricature of who you probably were. You know, that hey, let's get some writers in the room. Let's start creating ideas to put in their music. They already got their influence. And see, that's how you get the, the manipulation of individuality and and um and that's how you influence a, a generation you know what i'm saying and they hit the jackpot because again like we even look look at like today like i don't look at music as oh that's bad music because you know it's talking about glorifying the wrong things and shit like that look uh, -uh music is music but it, it's it's about the the problem comes when there's an imbalance and and ha like for instance it's not easy access you, you see what's being pushed versus what's being um again you start to understand algorithm and influencer culture on a higher degree where now you start to realize that being an artist ain't just being an artist anymore and see that's what a lot of people got a misconception of you want to be an artist but you got to understand the artist game you got to understand the business you got to understand about how this this culture was was presented and see when you understand the rules of how the rules and, and what's glorified from the eyes of the people who created it, you you start to understand how you can actually you see you see the difference between how to actually succeed in their eyes, and then you see the difference between who you actually are. And on some way, you see where you got to compromise. And see, this is like that 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 kind of tough decision because you gotta you gotta understand how to cater to the algorithm, but also how to be yourself enough to where you don't let the algorithm become you. And also you don't put yourself in a compromising position where you know you 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 weren't yourself. You know, you was just chasing this thing. So it's like 
a lot of people get into because I think that that that's what art is. It's your opportunity here to present yourself and do your thing how you want to do it. But again, how you going to support yourself? How you going to make it in this world the way it is? Now, it's not to say and then I, I that's that's even a deep decision everybody got to make for themselves as well. Are you here to change or are you here to maintain? And there's no right or wrong. But you got to be real with yourself. Like, what are you here to do? Because some people's mission is to stay up out the way. I just want to make cool shit. I want a simple life, simple house, boom, 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 boom. That's cool. Some people is like, no, I got I want to change the world. I got a, I got a purpose. I want to I want to do this. I want to I want to take my creativity to the highest heights. Some people look at life like that. And it's all about, you know, everybody got to be real with themselves as far as what they want. So I say all that all that to say is like cultivating decision. That's where we at right now, coming off of that Capricorn energy and dealing with this sun in, in Libra. Now, Venus is in Libra, too. So we're looking at our values. We're starting to get a more understanding about what it is that we value. And we're also looking for support. And that support is coming from our network, our associations. And so it becomes very important about how we're applying ourselves. See, and, and again, all that energy is, is in conflict with our individuality and what we're experiencing at the moment. Our experiences themselves are very solo or very like, damn, like, you know, you might even feel alone. But see, you have to act on putting yourself out there and, and, and putting yourself in positions where you can relate, even if it's hard. Your experiences themselves might point everything to you doing things on your own. And there are some things you got to do alone. And see, that's the that's the balance. That's where the balance comes in, because there are very well certain things that we do have to deal with alone. A lot of our long distance travels within the mind. For instance, you need to take a good amount of time by yourself to figure out what it is you're doing. What's the meaning and reasoning behind your experience? You need to take individual time to figure that out. But as far as how we need to be participating, once you get that time to yourself, it's time that now start relating and try your hand at getting involved uh, with different individuals. Not everybody. One on one. Start with one person, one person that you're already been building a foundation with. Now, Capricorn, again, was just giving that lesson, uh, helping us to learn and realize, like, oh, shit, I got to come to a decision. Who am I about to kick it with and not just kick it with? Who am I finna build with? Now, now, but understanding what you want. Do you want to kick it or do you want to build? You know what I'm saying? Because we got to be real with ourselves. Wh which one are you? Are you going to be the, are you going to be that representation of what it is that you do? Or are you just going to support somebody who got the answers? Because we, we got to come to a decision. Not everybody can do the same thing. Not everybody can be the exact. It's just right now in society, that's what everybody thinks that is the, the, the key to what they want. It's not actually who people are. Not everybody's an entrepreneur. You're not an entrepreneur. It's just it looked like the key to get what you want, which is that what whatever financial freedom, you know, because it sounds good growing. You know what I'm saying? College growing up. Oh, yeah. Multiple streams of income. Got to have this business. Got to start this. It's like all that bullshit sound good. But it's like it come down to who are you and what you finna do. And that's where the decision happens. And so see, now that we're in the moon being in Aquarius, it's about. Okay, movement again. Air, air is dealing with movement always. Movement, sharing ideas, um, communication, connecting, um, but connecting without the water aspect. So right now, you know, it's about the network. It's about not feeling too deeply about your insecurities, getting out there and getting involved. Because trust and believe that next season you will be in your feelings when Scorpio come around. And the last thing you want to do is spend all of the wrong transit and the wrong energy. And then when you get to the transit in which you're supposed to be in a different energy, right? Maybe the energy you cling to. Like, let's say you are Scorpio or you just got a lot of water and fire placements right now. We got all this air and earth in the sky, right? You might think, well, I'm highly uncomfortable. I want to feel good. I don't really want to participate with this air energy. Cool, right? What's going to happen is when we do get to the water time where it's going to be time to shut up, and and it, <laughs> time to shut up, time to time to soak into 
what you've cultivated the, the, the season before, new friendships, new connections, new relations, you're going to be stuck with nothing. You're going to be stuck with yourself. And you might start to feel like, damn, I wish I actually had individuals I can communicate with. Or I wish I actually did a little more networking or put myself in a position where I could feel more comfortable with my the energy I'm supposed to be cool with. Like, you wonder why certain seasons come around. It's like, damn, I'm a water sign. I got a bunch of water in my chart. It's water in the sky. Why do I feel like shit? It's like nine times out of ten, it's probably because the, the transit before, and this goes with the moon too, the transit before, you, you missed out on certain, uh, on participating in certain energies that would have made it easier or more made more sense for you to be comfortable in your vibe now. You missed out on certain things. And see, it's not, you don't always got to feel like that because sometimes it's cool to sit down and, and, and let a transit pass. Like sometimes the energy just ain't for you. And that's a decision you got to make based upon your own spiritual discernment. But at the same time, you know, this is the, this is the deal. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything is a progression and don't confuse yourself with the, with the fear of missing out, thinking that who you are is, you know, you got to be uh, anxious and you got to, you know, oh, if I miss a transit, I'm, I'm fucked up. No, you got two days each moon sign, you know what I'm saying? You'll be all right. And even that, it's like just simply being in the mind state or being in the space of where the energy is out is enough. Now, you got to put in the energy work. And we know it's only a two-week window when the waxing period is happening that you need to go the hardest. And then after that, it's protection. It's, it's chilling. You know, chilling, though. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know what I'm saying? Sun don't chill type shit. <laughs> Shout out to AA or she. But, um, yeah, but, but like, on some real shit, I say that to say, um, so right now, with all this air, you know, heavy on the associations, you know, now we're going to, we got the moon there, moon in Aquarius. So, uh, uh, moon in Aquarius in general is reacting and responding with what's far out. You might even feel rebellious. You might feel your individuality a little bit more. Now, when we talk about Uranus itself, individuality, Uranus is still in Taurus. So we got that Grand Earth Tron, right? So we got the sun and, well, let me, let me, let me, let me slow down real quick. Let's finish talking about what we started talking about with the moon in Aquarius, right? The moon in Aquarius reacting to uh, information far out. Uh, being fixated on a communication style, being fixated on your ideas. So right now, again, cultivating a decision. You should have made your decision in Capricorn when the moon was in Capricorn. Um, you know, that learning process should have brought you, brought you to a conclusion on what, what you actually need to do on, on the utmost serious business sense, right? And if you're a person who didn't, who, you know damn well you're not taking what you're doing seriously, understand that this shit gonna come back to bite you, you know what I'm saying? Just no way around it. Right now, it's like, you gotta be a little more serious and discerning about what communication, associations, relationships, and the structure of your life. Um, the transformations needed in order to get from point A to point B. And being an individual about it and not really, again, clinging on to too many emotions and feelings or not clean again fixated in your individuality that's uranus and taurus as well fixated in your individuality so coming to the conclusion that look you are who you are and whatever you're doing in life if it's not working don't be stubborn you got to change you got to change the practicality of it so if you're doing something that's not working all the way down to if you're in a job and you just know that that job not working for you don't you can you, you can choose to do whatever you want to do but it comes down to are you forcing yourself to do it or are you doing what you want? And when you look at life like that, it's like now you could get trick. You could get tricky with it. Trick your mind knowing that, okay, well, yeah, I'm doing this bullshit. But in my mind, I'm, you know what I'm saying? You could get you crafty or you just got to come to the conclusion that fuck that shit. I need to dive fully into the thing that I want to do and trust and believe in that. You know, which is, again, it, it could be highly uncomfortable, especially right now with all this energy dealing with Saturn and us having to end. But see, again, cultivating the decision. See, when you align Saturn and you tell Saturn the plan, Saturn nine times out of ten going to work with you because that's the thing. Saturn don't really care about the faith necessarily. But if you have a plan behind the faith, Saturn can at least hold you to something. 
Because that's what Saturn is about. It's about holding you to something. Sometimes, like, with so, if all you got is faith, right? But you're not putting in work. You ain't got nothing holding that faith down. Like, nothing that you actually participating in that you can attach to that faith. Like, for instance, you say you want to be, um, you, you say you want to do whatever you want to do. You say you want to uh, be a NASCAR, right? But you don't know nothing about cars. You just got faith that you're going to end up in, in a NASCAR race. But you ain't doing no studying about cars. You're not experiencing nothing dealing with cars. You're not creating no meaning and reasoning as to why you want to be a NASCAR racer. Saturn going to look at you like there's nothing there but just uh, missed. You know what I'm saying? Saturn not going to fuck with that. But Saturn will fuck with you if you actually, you know, well, you know, I got faith in being a NASCAR driver. And the reason I got faith is because every day I make sure I learn about how a car works and how, how to work with tires. And, and, and I, I learn how to repair stuff myself. Um, I, I actually, um, every day I, I got a, a meaning as to like my NASCAR name and like the different colors I'm going to put on my car. I got like meanings for those because I, when I, you know. All these different things, Saturn can then, and this is for people with Jupiter in uh, Capricorn low key, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, you make your faith work the best when you actually got something real to support that faith. And then, you know, and that's not always how faith works because faith falls. Faith has a hard time. Jupiter has a hard time in Capricorn, but I know it's not a Jupiter and Capricorn transit, but um, just understanding how Saturn works and how you can take Saturn energy and, and, and make it work for you because sometimes Saturn, Saturn scares us. You know, Saturn uh, can come off scary sometimes because that's the thing too. It's like we want things to work, you know, so badly to the point where we're convinced, we're, we're, as individuals will convince themselves about how they're not capable of, capable of doing something just so we can be right. Like people are hardwired to want to be right and to our detriment sometimes to the point where you will convince yourself of something just so you can be right about it. It feels safe to feel like you'll never make it doing what it is you want to do. So you'll lie to yourself and, and create the truth of I ain't shit. Like you, you, you will emulate that simply because you want to be right. It's easier to not be shit. So I want to be right about that. It's as opposed to the fear of being wrong. I, I think I'm the shit. I go for my goals and I don't mean them. But people don't realize you lost from the mind first. Like it's all about them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all from the mental type shit. You, you lost because of how you started it. You had the wrong, you had the wrong, um, initiating thought. You had the wrong, you know what I'm saying? You, you wasn't going about it the right way. You had the wrong, per and then, excuse me. And then, you know what I'm saying? You got the wrong, when you start wrong, the wrong perception is going to lead you down. It's like, you know, you started wrong. You're going to go down the wrong hallway. You went through the wrong door. You're going to go through the wrong hallway and it's going to lead you to a place you, you, you confused now. But when you look back, how you end up is always how you started. So if you started doubting yourself, started looking at yourself like you, you wouldn't make it there, but you decided to participate half-ass anyway, right? But we want to be right. So you're, it's like whatever you got in your mind, you naturally going to manifest being right about that. And that's the that's the scary part, but that's also the part where, you know, you should get excited. You should get happy because you should realize that, okay, damn, even if it don't make sense, even if it don't look like it's going to work, if I convince myself that it's, I'm right about my success, I'm right about whatever decision I'm making. Now, again, this, this don't exempt you from making mistakes, but the mistakes you make will be in alignment with keeping you still be within the same Like For instance, you might trip and fall. But you tripped and fell in the in the right hallway, going in the right direction, heading towards the right door. So you making any stumbling, going through the wrong door along that hallway, you still on the right path. You know what I'm saying? And I don't even want to say the right path. You still on a path that's leading you to towards what it is that you initiated, what you started, because you started from the right place. You started with the right mindset. You, you know what I'm saying? And even if you your mindset, because we all go through little, you know, and that's you going through the wrong door for a second. But understanding that, okay, peek in, but 
this is why it's important to keep strong on what your initial idea was because it's easy to go down one door and then that door lead to another hallway and before you know it you didn't completely dis uh, distracted yourself and, and gone to a whole different direction the whole different part of the building but um you know that's just something to keep in mind you know what i'm saying so you know you got to be careful you got to be aware of what's going on within yourself at, especially as we're going about our life um but damn yeah but back to what i was saying so cultivating the decision so with the moon and aquarius right um that's the name of the game right now we're reacting to our associations and how we associate and we have the gift to actually act on these things you know what i'm saying after you're reflecting on your your associations and seeing how your fixed idea can apply with other individuals this is where the building occurs this is where again and it's next to saturn then saturn finna go direct saturn goes direct on the 23rd so that's later this month um and then mercury enters libra on the 11th i know i know i'm talking uh, advanced i mean ahead of time but that's a week from now on the 11th is when um you know, so all what I'm saying is all these things are prepping us to actually be relating and participating in our relationships or in our in our associations. Um, and then Pluto ends up going direct um, on the full moon. So that's going to be on Sunday. Um, yeah, I'm just looking at the planet, you know what I'm saying? I will pull it put it pull it up, but I, I got I got the phone on top. Well, yeah, I got the phone on top of that. Y'all know what the planet look like. But I can't I can't not show it. You know what I'm saying? We got the, the little battery right here. But yeah, you know can't not show it. Just ain't feel right. But um yeah. So um with you know, us dealing with the moon, Saturn, Mars, the sun, and Venus. Um, again, the sun and Venus, we know, is all about that relating and also support, giving support. Um, but also understanding what, what we find value in and applying, like, almost like relating and giving value to certain certain things that we're participating with it's like we 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 have enough to give right now um and then the moon again reacting and responding to network associations along with saturn so feeling into the reality of our situations you know what i'm saying feel it and and that's the thing we're we you need to participate in these associations and, and, and within these relationships in order to get a sense of what to feel about them and as you participate you get to be in that feeling and it'll give you better insight on whether or not your association is actually working for you or if it's one that you need to kind of separate from and continue to you know be kind of an individual until you find a group of other individuals who think and feel on a level that is congruent with yours, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, we a team for real. See, when you get when you get around individuals who you know you're not mentally compatible with and mentally as as far as thoughts and feelings, then that's when things start to go haywire because you you, you don't quite you can't quite get in the groove. You know what I'm saying? This you know this conflict comes up, that conflict comes up. This person drops the ball. That person feels like they're carrying everything, and so there's a, a disconnect that happens. And it breaks down everything from the inside out. And anything that's broken from the inside, it's not going to go very far externally. So, you know, that's being, um, that's what's going on. And then the planet uh, that we're using to kind of go to both of these is Mars. Mars sitting in, in Gemini. Now, Mars is eventually going to go retrograde at the end of the month. So, right now, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to Mars and we're incorporating Mars. Being passionate or communicating about our passion and, and being passionately involved in these communications, passionately involved with sharing our ideas, not to the point where you, you know, go around 
um, bombarding people with your mind. But again, you want to make sure you speak your shit. You speak up, especially with people you're trying to get involved with, relate to, or associate with. Because if you don't now, when Mars goes into retrograde, that's going to be kind of a remapping. And they say like Mars is in a shadow period too. So even being mindful of how we're um, associating with our passions. Um, be mindful of the certain conversations that, again, piss us off. What conversations are pissing you off right now? But also, what, what conversations are making you excited? And figuring out, okay, when I communicate with these individuals, when I associate with this group, when I do these, uh, when I'm relating to these people, places, and things, is that sparking my interest? Is that making me motivated? Also, understand Mars is a self-motivator. Sometimes you got to get yourself moving. Nine times out of ten, that is the case. You got to get yourself moving, so you're gonna have to put yourself in these in these rooms where conversations can be had. You got to put your mind in in places that allows for your expression to come out and allows for you to communicate that. You know, you've got to put yourself in these positions. And the good thing about this energy right here is, however you do that, nine times out of ten, with the sun next to Venus, it's gonna give you in trining. Mars and Gemini, it's going to give you enough elegance, it's going to give you enough grace to where that aggression is might just come off to be the very thing that people appreciate from you. That that aggression you go about communicating and sharing your mind and your ideas, if you're amongst the right associations, that's going to be the groundwork that you can actually build from. Because see, that's the thing, when Saturn goes direct, that's us coming back. That's when you're going to have to actually come back. That's when we're all going to come back and understand the, the importance of structuring with our associations. Like right now with the retrograde, we're still kind of teetering on the, I don't really know. But soon as that clicks, it's going to be like, oh shit, okay, wait. I actually do need these associations if I'm going to build anything. So a lot, again, an air of seriousness comes when Saturn comes back direct. It's going to be more serious. Right now, your associations, you might think it's all playtime. And playtime is in, you know, it could be positive in the sense of like, you know, you having a good time in your associations, right? But also playtime in the sense of, you know, you might have certain decisions, certain things, certain decisions you need to make when it comes to your associations, whether it's restricting yourself from certain things, setting boundaries with certain things, cutting certain people off or uh, or making sure that you are presenting your best self and being a professional when it comes to your association. And all I mean by that is having good status about yourself and good status is about, you know, again, when you're involving yourself with other people, you know, are you half assing the job? Are you really showing up and when you show up are you being resourceful are you bringing your resources are you making sure that the others you're around are you are you working are you around other individuals who's serious about what they do and a lot of people feel like they're serious about what they do but you really got to look at your actions what are you doing that represent that seriousness and like we got to be real with ourselves in the end because we all be bullshitting a lot of times we all go through a day and know we bullshitting, but turn around and be like, damn, I want rich. I want to be rich. I want to have this. I want to do that. I want to, you know, we got all these ideas of what we want to do and what we would do if we had X, Y, and Z. But it's like, yo, we got to cut the bullshit down and be real. What are you doing that's going to harness that shit? What are you doing that's going to uh, cultivate that shit? And that's the, that's the core of the decision we need to make right now. What the fuck are you doing? You know what I'm saying? What the fuck are you doing? And and, and fuck how you're going to go about it, right? Because the how shouldn't be, the how can't be too big of a question because how is a lot of times why, <laughs> how is a lot of times why we are so stagnant and we're so, we, we miss out on things and we so, you know, again, even during, like I was talking about earlier with the transits. A lot of times you didn't participate with certain transits simply because you spent too much time worrying about how to participate with them. Fuck the how. Because the how is always going to be, if you want to know how, just look at where the sun is at. By relating, by being relatable, by communicating. That's how. By your sun sign, understand how you're going to have difficulties or where the difficulties are in your how. For instance, I'm a Pisces sun. It's an inconjunct with the sun right now. So I know that how I go about things, I might misunderstand it. But until I participate it, but I know that the misunderstanding, as long as I'm using Venus energy and understanding a bit of Saturn and 
understanding um yeah venus is saturn the energies of the 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 sun in the sky right now i know if i implement these energies even if I, there is a misunderstanding right i can clear it up and it won't be harsh it'll be something that i i learn from and move better with with time but see the thing is a lot of us get so clinged on how that we don't realize it's not until you jump into the situation, jump into an experience that you learn or that you uh, you adapt. And see, that's the, that's our strong suit as people, as individuals, as spirits to change, to adapt. That's the thing. You know things. That's the power. You know things. So you, uh, you can adapt to anything. That's why you wonder, like you look in the world, the Internet opens you up to how people live everywhere this way is people live that you would be like what the fuck how do you make that work every day but you know how because we are no thing as spirits so any spirit in a body can do miraculous things or be nothing you know what i'm saying and to the point where you can shape shift any kind of way you know what i'm saying you can make anything work for you you know you wonder how like man you you, you look you in a house right now watching this video like damn i don't know how a homeless person can live, especially you, you know what I'm saying? But it's happening. It's really a thing because that's the thing. It's infinite ways to live. It's all possibilities out here, you know, and that's the peace of God that we all hold. That's who we, you know what I'm saying? If you talk about anything about God, that's the peace of God we all have, the ability to be no thing and to take the, to do whatever we need, you know what I'm saying? To, to, to play out all possibilities at, at any given moment. And at any given point in our life, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, some people watching, you probably was homeless at a point in time. And guess what you did? You 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 said, fuck how, I'm going to just do something. <laughs> and then as you started to do something, you seen what worked. And it wasn't until you participated that you actually had the keys to figure out, oh, I could actually do this. You know, and sometimes it takes time. That's the thing with Saturn too. It takes time. And that, that's another thing that might scare us a lot of times. We might think that the time frame that we are starting to do something versus where we want to be at is too far. But you fucked yourself up because, you know, that's 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 a mentality that that keeps you out of heaven. That keeps you out of God's grace. That keeps you out of good opportunities. That keeps you out of situations and circumstances that work for you that's the exact mind state that keep you from greatness worrying about worrying about little shit that god wouldn't that god didn't tell you to worry about like time frames who made time frames you know what i'm saying and i know time is the mark from this point to another point like when we look at the zodiac wheel you calculate time based upon distance and you know intervals and stuff like that but my point is like who told you that this was the right age to be this rich or oh if you don't you know and a lot of times we, we even even down to people we let people put pressure on ourselves about time frames and shit like that or just little shit shit that keeps you again in fear damn if i don't get this if i don't get this uh car by this month i'm screwed you know what i'm saying so you you again that anxiety builds up and see again Mercury is back in uh, Virgo, which Mercury is exalted here. Overactivity of the mind, overthinking like shit. You know what I'm saying? And coming off, and we just went direct with Mercury. So Mercury buzzing right now. Mercury got so much shit to say that again, like damn, shut the fuck up a little bit. You got you got to make sure you put your mind in check and make sure that all that all those conversations are actually conversations that's going to help you. Because again, and it, it was worse yesterday because of the trying. You know what I'm saying? We but understand that mercury is trying to pluto so a lot of times we might be overthinking about the transformations that we need to make we, we're probably overthinking about even the changes that we need to make and there might be a lot of added anxiety based upon you knowing damn well you haven't been changing and transforming all the way fully and this again cultivating a decision you got to come to a decision and it's it's best to move now because that's going to be part of what is important for the full moon. See, now that we're, again, square, square in that full moon energy, and we ain't get there yet, but you understand, like, I don't know, I, I like to look, I look at, I look at astrology a little different. When the moon was in Capricorn, I, I look at everything from the waxing period as preparation for the waning period. And the work you put in for the waxing period 
it's the result you get for the waning. So I understand life like if you, we the new moon was here, everything we experience up until we get to the full moon is just again preparation. So the, when the moon was in Capricorn the other day, we was learning about the structure of things and how to structure our relationships as well. Learning how to make sense out of these things, right? That's important because now that the moon is in Aquarius dealing with individuality, now we've learned how our how our relationships are working and how we can how to structure them so that we can make sure that we're getting resources in return for the resources that we put out. Now we're learning our individuality and we're saying, okay, this is my individual bag. And my individual bag, this is already going to create opportunities with that Aries energy. That's where we're headed. So right now, you taking the gift of where the sun is at to tap into your individuality, that's going to create an opportunity when the full moon gets here because it's and it's already and it, it's better because there's a planet there. So there's something there to like work with. There's an opportunity with our experiences for us to create more understanding there. For us to create more energy there where now we know how to associate our individual experience with our relationships. That's that's part of what we and then again, that's our opposition. So we can create more balance through the sex through the we can create more balance through the sextile coupled with the trine. You know what I'm saying? The trine is that gift. That gift is giving us again. Everything we need to know about our actions and how to participate with things is coming through the trine. It's the gift. But the opportunity we have right now with the moon and Aquarius connects with Jupiter, our experiences. So we, we get through our emotional body, how we react and are responding to our associations. And us also reacting and responding to the reality of our associations with Saturn there. Saturn's still in retrograde, about to go direct. That information gives us an opportunity to know how to associate our individuality, our individual experience, our individual wisdom and knowledge. That creates that a uh, firmer situation of balance. Now, now that you have that opportunity, you have more balance that you can work with, that you know now how to better relate because you now understand where your individual experiences lie within your associations. And also, your individual experience is tapping in, again, opportunities with Mars. With, with with um your passions you know what i'm saying that's the thing that's connecting us all right now is our individual uh, our our passions and what and again our associate like how to associate our passions is you know hopefully y'all following what i'm saying is creating this interesting alignment in the sky in general i didn't even look at the the chart you know what i'm saying but yeah but getting back to that earth triangle because, you know, I, that was all about the, the intro. But getting back to that Earth trying, you know, we're dealing with some intense shit. Um, you know, we got Mercury. Mercury is also, um, also has us overthinking about our, our spiritual path, our North Node. The North Node brings anxiety by itself simply because it's, it's new territory. You know what I'm saying? It's new territory. It's us moving towards that. So it's like Mercury is 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 like we have the gift to think. And see, that's the thing. It's a gift, but it could just it, the negative end is overthinking about it. The positive is you have all the mental faculties you need to make sense out of your individuality, spiritual path, and how that relates, and your transformations that you need to make. So you know damn well what you need to do. That's the gift. That's the key right now. That's the gift that Earth is giving. You know damn well what you need to do, but it's going to take discipline. It's going to take seriousness. It's going to take you cutting out all the bullshit and being real with yourself at the end of the day. And that's what it, that's all it come down to. So anything you layer on top of that as far as, oh, I feel like this or I feel like that, that's wrong. Because when you do get into Scorpio, you're going to have all these feelings, but they're not going to be the right feelings. You didn't develop enough Earth and air at a time we had that in the sky to make that water work so during the time where we all supposed to be in our waters you're going to be busy trying to network in a time where everybody already got their fixated feeling on what they're involved in you're going to be trying to relate at a time where no nigga mars is in the sky and pluto it's going to be a little rough and you're going to wonder why you end up getting backstabbed why you end up um feeling unsafe how you end up feeling vulnerable, how you end up getting exposed is because you didn't put the right things around you during times where it was the energy too. Like right now, like, and I always look at things as progression. 
this Scorpio season, going into Scorpio season, right? Not to get too in depth, but just understanding the nature of Scorpio and where the planets are right now. You know, we got all this earth and air. You already know the next transition from all these these stelliums, because it's like you got to think. We we got this. We got Earth trying in a, a air trying. You already know that very soon, all them signs in in the uh, Earth sign, all, or <laughs> all them signs in the um, yeah, all them signs in the Earth is gonna go into air, and all them signs in air is gonna go into water. So you know the next the next phase of things is gonna be a watery communication time. We're gonna want to relate our emotions very soon. You know, and that's just based upon me looking at where planets are now and where everything's finna head. You know what I'm saying? The sun, um, Venus is in air. The next sign of that after that is, is Scorpio. Um, you know, Saturn is in, you know, Saturn gonna take some time and you know it, it's not it's not that extreme. But I mean you, you understand. Jupiter is going retrograde into Pisces, so that's going to be water. Um, but Saturn is is still retrograde, but soon it's going to go back direct. It's still going to be in air. Um, Pluto is in retrograde, so it's still in Earth. But you you get what I'm saying. Mars is is going to go retrograde too. But look at look at exactly what I said. Earth and air is going to be in the sky. I mean, water and air is where we're heading to. From what it looks like now, it's like we're going to be dealing with wanting to relate and associate, but also feel comfortable. And, and whether we're associating and communicating about how we feel, we're still going to want to, we're still going to deal with feeling and air. And that's an inconjunct. So it's going to be a time that it's probably going to get a little messy, especially if you didn't take the time now where we got Grand Airtron and Earth to not only get out there and communicate and get 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 the right individuals around you, but also Earth creating an ability to solidify things and it's solidifying things based upon your individuality, your true spiritual path and um, your tra the, tr the, the tr uh, transformations you need to make, basically. You know what I'm saying? That's what's going to solidify who you're around in your network and help that network to actually make sense. And that way, when you secure yourself like that, us going through Scorpio, when the sun is going to be on the south node, when when we're gonna have all these water trans, we're just gonna start having more water transits. Jupiter is gonna be in Pisces now. It's like you're gonna be protected in a different kind of way than had you again not really take the time to etch out, communicate, reach out, and structure again. Come to a practical sense, a firm grip on your individuality. And your um, transformation that you need to make, because that's the thing. We got to commit to these transformations. We've been dealing. With, it's it's easy to, especially in your life, transforming things. Like sometimes we even make mistakes and transform the wrong things. But see, here's the thing: with all that energy, sometimes we forget that it's that back and forth that we need, um, or we get stuck into the back and forth. You know, we need the back and forth, but it's that back and forth we need, knowing damn well it's time. But what do we always say about Pluto? The last thing you want is for her, him, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? for it to come transform something in your life. That's the last thing you want. And it's all funny games until you realize, ooh, Pluto? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's all funny games until, oh, shit. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen today. You know what I'm saying? I thought I had a little more time. To, but it's like... We end up wasting so much time. You know what I'm saying? That's my point. We just end up wasting so much time going back and forth. And, um, yeah, it, you know, it, it gets tough. It gets tough because you end up realizing that you had the power all along. You just waited too long to, to get it off. You just waited too long to, you know what I'm saying? So, it, it becomes a situation where it's like, damn, you know, like, but it, that's that's one of the worst feelings, at least to me. Like, that's one of the worst feelings when it's like you had the power right at your fingertips and you let it slip. And we're at a time in light in, in, in society in, in general where it's not going to be this open, just like 2020 shit. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Where we was getting money for nothing. It's not going to be like this forever. So we got this space right now where it's new technology, new world, new things to get involved in to establish yourself. But you looking at it right now like, oh, it's just a little hard. I feel I don't feel like it right now. I, I think I can. I got a couple more days. It's like them couple days turn into months, turn into years. Then it's like because in the next couple years, the work you did today is going to be 
we're going to see who did the work. You know, I always say that. We're going to see who did it. We're going to see who was participating. We're going to see who went through that hardship and made it work. You know what I'm saying? We're going to see who let them their feelings overtake them. We're going to see who let their desires overtake them and had the wrong concept jumping in the shit. Uh, we going to see it. It's going to be very apparent. It's going to be very clear. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so... Moon and um Moon and Aquarius. What else is it gonna be affecting? Um Moon and Aquarius is gonna be opposite Lilith in, in Leo right now. So Lilith is in Leo, like we don't be keeping track of these asteroids that like we should. With Lilith and Leo, you know, this is our embarrassing moments might come from expression. So we might be nervous to express ourselves. But guess what? We gotta relate. We can't we can't let we can't let and again that's creating a sextile with the sun and Mars. We can't let our insecurities or our fear of being embarrassed or being proven wrong create an opportunity in which we don't show our passions or we're not as vocal about our passions or create a situation where we take an opportunity that we're not participating with our relationships because we feel like we don't we 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 nervous about what our, our expression or we don't wanna Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? It's just, again, it's creating an opportunity with our embarrassing moments where we're going to look at our son, the son in Libra, and we're we'll like, oh, well, if I present myself, if I try to relate, what if they don't relate to my expression? Like, you know, you can't let that fear get in the way of your shit. It's also going to be opposite um, the moon in Aquarius. So feel into your individuality enough to not give a fuck about how you're presenting your shit. Even if you are nervous, nine times out of 10, the shit that's making you the most nervous is the shit you need to do with them. You need to do first. I've been living like that lately where the shit, as soon as I get a feeling like, oh, that, that's, uh, that's a little nerve wracking. Hit that shit. Jump into it. You know what I'm saying? Hit that shit because that's the shit that is the reason why you're not where you want to be. That, that alone is the reason why you're not where you want to be. Get that shit. You know, anytime you feel nervous, like, oh, if I do this, it's going to cut the feelings off and the thoughts off and know that you need to do that right then and there. You know, and it gets, it gets hard, so you can't do it all the time, but practice that energy where any fear you feel, immediately address it. You know, because fear builds up. Like I was talking about uh, Mercury and Virgo in general. It, it, that's, that's what causes stress. Things we know we need to act on that incite a certain feeling in us, but we choose not to act on it based upon us wanting to uh, think about it, analyze it before we participate. You would let it accumulate, and then it's like when there comes times where you need to get regular actions done, your first instinct is to procrastinate because it's like, damn, what about all this other shit on my mind? It's just pile up, pile up, pile up. You gotta, you gotta burn that off. That's what the sun is for, to burn shit off. Don't let Mercury rule you. Mercury is supposed to be the child of the sun. Not the other way around. The child run the parent. So now the child want all these things and the parent can't get done what it needs to get done. And it wonders why it's behind in life and why it's so stressed out. And now it want to unleash things on the child that the child ain't even responsible for. No, you the parent. You supposed to put your idea, your thoughts in line. Put these motherfuckers in line. Like, no, we doing this today. But understanding what needs to be done and taking action on that and not letting... All the chatter get to you to the point you let it pile up, pile up, pile up, pile up. And now you working for the kid. You working for your thoughts. Don't work for your thoughts. Your thoughts ain't even you. In a lot of ways, you're possessed. You're working for a spirit. You need to chill. You know what I'm saying? Chill out. And you, you need to kill. Not chill. You need to kill that. Um, yeah. That's a big one right now. Um, Pyros, Silver Aries. <sighs> yeah. I mean, other asteroids ain't really making no big um, alignments with the moon, so I'm not going to go too deep into them. Okay, well, moon, uh, okay, well, let's talk about palace. Palace is in cancer, for instance. So we're, we need to be in a relationship with our comfort. So you need to kind of, in these new experiences, in these highly uncomfortable times, we need to be creating instances in which we develop and cultivate a relationship with our own sense of comfortability that's just like to say get comfortable with these uncomfortable situations especially with palace opposite pluto you know our transformations we need to get comfortable with our new life you know make the transformations and find ways to be comfortable in this new pattern um and then it's creating an inconjunct with the moon so uh, we might misunderstand that that energy in general but that's a good misunderstanding simply and not good because of the the two signs associated because you know 
Cancer is way different than uh, Aquarius. If anything, they kind of, you know, they, they that's one of the harder in conjunctions. Um, but for the most part, just understanding it comes down to getting comfortable with your individuality and allowing that Aquarius energy where the moon is at, again, to put you in that position where uh, well, I'm reacting and responding to how I think and how I want to communicate and my own individuality, my own way of going about things. And I'm going to cultivate, I'm going to create comfort from that. Um, and that misunderstanding, you know, will have some help and then you'll feel even more comfortable when the moon gets in the Pisces and then it's going to create a trial with that palace energy. So it's going to be easier to create comfort, but you want to feel good about what you're creating comfort in. For instance, you want to make sure that you fought for your individuality so that you can relax in a dream. You know what I'm saying? Not, I didn't really vocalize my individuality. I let the world overtake me and now I'm forced to feel comfortable with crumbs. That's how that shit play out for real. Um, Chiron and everything. Talk about Chiron. Chiron, yeah, opportunities um, to make emotional mistakes or to um, grow from our mistakes. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, with the moon and Aquarius, sextile and um, Chiron and Aries. Chiron already been there, kind of wreaking havoc and shit like that. But for the most part, like, Chiron been cool. Chiron been us taking accountability for our mistakes, you know, Chiron and Aries. It's like, you know, it comes down to taking accountability, especially right now it being in retrograde, taking accountability for our mistakes and where we went wrong, especially as it, it deals with our individual experience. And I've been talking about Jupiter and, and Aries, really it's two degrees right now, so it's getting a little bit of that Pisces energy already, you know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah. And where's the last? Yeah, so you got Ceres and um, Virgo. See that's a that's a uh, that's a in conjunction as well with the moon. Is that a yod? I think that's what a yod is right there. You know, a yod between Ceres, Pallas, and um, the moon and Saturn right now. You know what I'm saying? So Ceres is like our responsibilities. Pallas is our relationships. Our responsibilities is coming in the form of Virgo. So the things on our mind, the things that we're thinking about, the things that we're practicing practicalizing our daily routine you know what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and also how you you know how you get to that day-to-day -day work so the functionality of your life um that's creating the opportunity with um palace so we need to be making a relationship we, we that's an opportunity right there between our relationship with our comfortability and what we're actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis based upon our responsibilities so the better you can take the opportunity to really work on your day-to-day -day. so break down your goals the decision you cultivated break it down to what you can do on a day-to-day -day basis and start to use the opportunity to create comfort there as you create that comfort the misunderstanding from where saturn is at because that's the planet that's really in aquarius that's really getting hit with this the moon is here but saturn being right here um that's gonna help clear up that un that misunderstanding with that Saturn energy. That Saturn energy will, again, your the structure of your life and how you gain stability is, you'll start to be able to make more sense based upon that sextile between your day-to-day -day routine and taking responsibility to that because that's what serious is. It's like the, the young mother where it's like you gotta take responsibility for something that you not might not always want to but you know you got to. It's your child. It's your responsibility regardless. So you got to take control of that or else, again, you, you reap the benefit. You know, so you can you can take that allegory where you need to take it. Think about a, a mother who's not taking care of their kids, a young mother, you know what I'm saying, even a single mother who's not taking care of their kids. Then just think about what that entails if they don't. So, yeah, you might get a false sense of freedom, but you, you get all that energy back on the back end. So you might think, well, it's a it's. That's where how series play out. It's something that you need to take responsibility from, but you also gonna get hit. You're gonna get hit at times where it's gonna be easier to just let it let it be and be free about it. But it's like it's gonna come back to bite you. So you gotta take control. Um, you know that, and then that's and then again working to feel comfortable with that new routine. And that new routine is gonna help clear up a little bit of that uncomfortability you might get from the misunderstanding with how to make sense out of reality right now so that's a little something, something. um but yeah that's 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 it for the most part you know what i'm saying so yeah man much love um thank y'all man and then juno is in uh pisces in retrograde
so longevity with the dream you know what i'm saying while our dream is kind of like our dreams are kind of being we're trying to our dreams are going to play a bigger role especially when you know so we get into scorpio season but right now we're working through misunderstandings um and then with juno retrograde in, in, in pisces it's like us finding the longevity in our dreams kind of low-key in a drawing board with our dreams with all this earth and air we're we're focused on that and relationships it's almost like we know that the relationships we get involved in and how we uh are participating with our realistic aspects and our foundation we know that that is the only way we're going to get the dream to work so it's like us tending to that while at the same time subconsciously we're finding the longevity in our dreams neptune's still in retrograde we still dealing with old ways of going about our dreams and just old dreams that we had in general and seeing how they were illusions we're working ourselves out of illusions stuff like that so yeah that's 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 it for the most part much love i appreciate y'all for tuning in thank y'all so much um you know a whole lot of new stuff on the way got the um music video Pleiades with my boy kells that's coming on thursday thursday you know what i'm saying we dropping that real smooth and um, just a whole bunch of other stuff. I, I, I can't wait to get to y'all. And y'all already know in the description, if you're looking to get your hands on a Astro Numerology Daystar Planner, go ahead and link is below. And uh, if you're interested in getting a reading, my readings are open as well. Um, business consultations, all that all that good stuff. Business consultations with your astrology, um, just regular astrology readings. And uh, if you need more details on the list, I got it on my Instagram. That's listed below, Dave Beyond TV. And um, also, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, also, you can just email me. My email is below. And you can just ask me, you know, what my what my services are. And I got you, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, a lot of cool things on the way. Shout out to everybody doing their thing. Shout out to Solar Systems on IG. Shout out to um, Endless Abilities. Uh, my boy Jalen. And shout out to, you know, uh, St. Uno. He, he, he shot the um, video. Um yeah, just shout out to everybody, man. Shout out to everybody doing anything. Whole soul group, subconscious community, everybody. Much love. Peace.